Good morning, welcome. Welcome to the Ukraine in Washington 2016 conference. My name's Oris Dechikiewski. I'm a policy advisor at the U.S. Helsinki Commission, otherwise known as the Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe, and have been asked and tasked by the U.S. Ukraine Foundation to serve as your friendly forum moderator, um, introducing panels and panelists and trying to keep things moving on time, which may be a bit of a challenge because we really have a packed schedule. Uh, before starting, I want to note the passing yesterday in Kiev of Bogdan Havrilishin, a prominent economist, professor, philanthropist, community activist, a person who I'm sure some or many of you knew and who did so, so much throughout his life to help Ukraine, Bichna Pamyat, eternal memory. Now, the purpose of this conference is to initiate or set the stage for a dialogue with the next administration, hence the title, the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation and Friends of Ukraine Network, F-O-U-N, initiating dialogue with the next president of the United States. And also, I'll parenthetically add, initiating and really continuing the dialogue with the U.S. Congress. And later in the day, uh, we'll hear from surrogates for the two candidates, and we'll hear about several components of this dialogue, especially about the FOUN. Uh, but I also, I want to note the formation of uh, two other initiatives, and that is the Nationwide Ukraine Advocacy Network and the former members of Congress for Ukraine. And I think we'll hear a little bit more about those a little bit later as well. But before I turn to our co-chairs, I have the great pleasure uh, to introduce Oksana Shular from the Embassy of Ukraine here in Washington for some brief remarks. Oksana is currently the Charge d'Affaires ad interim at the Embassy of Ukraine. She holds the rank of Minister Counselor. She assumed the position of political counselor at the embassy in uh, September 2015, so a little over a year ago, after serving as Deputy Director of Foreign Policy Department for the administration of the President of Ukraine. She joined the administration after advising uh, Petro Poroshenko on foreign policy issues in 2014, when he was a candidate. Uh, previously, she has worked uh, at the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs as First Secretary and for the Rada's European Integration Committee. Uh, we're pleased to have Oksana Shular with us. Please, Oksana. Thank you very much, Orest, for such a nice introduction. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Druzi Ukraini, on behalf of the Embassy of Ukraine in the United States, I would like to thank the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation and personally Nadia McConnell, as well to Friends of Ukraine Network for the tireless effort to continue and amplify a dialogue on Ukraine in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, due to urgent circumstances, Ukraine's Ambassador Valery Chaly could not be here this morning to welcome you all but he conveys his warmest regards and wishes you a fruitful discussion during today's sessions that take place in a time of unique turbulence, challenge, and the chance for Ukraine. This timely discussion provides a good opportunity to evaluate steps that have been made over the last years to stop the Russian aggression against Ukraine and in the region, to restore Ukraine's territorial integrity and the international order, brutally violated by the Russian Federation after its occupation of Georgia's Abkhazia and South Ossetia, illegally attempted annexation of Crimea, and invasion in Donbass. And it is a high time for us, Ukrainians, and for the friends of Ukraine to set a future bilateral agenda. Ukraine appreciates the unwavering support of the United States in the face of the Russian aggression in cementing the transatlantic unity in solidarity with Ukraine and providing assistance for defense and reforms in our country. We appreciate the sound voice of the Ukrainian American community and glad to witness that the Ukrainian cause has united the American politicians across the aisle. 
and we need your continuous effort in advocating for some critically important legislation that would unlock wider support for Ukraine and would put in place some efficient mechanisms to counter the Russian aggression. One of such essential initiatives is Stand for Ukraine Act, recently passed by the House of Representatives. It's voting in the Senate by the end of the year, and it's signing into the law by the President of the United States would signal a very strong support and would set guidelines for the next administration. Witnessing one of the most unprecedented political battles in history, we appreciate that Ukraine's issue in different extents was reflected in platforms of both Democratic and Republican parties. Also, Ukraine's topic in the current political campaign indicates that there is a high emphasis on the need to establish a solid security system in the region. And Ukraine, when strengthened and in peace, could play a difference in the region for its strategic partners in the currently increasing turbulence in the world. And we call on the United States not to procrastinate during the upcoming transition. We simply cannot afford pauses. We need to speed up the pace, ensure consistency, and enhance policies in support of a peaceful, more secure, and strongly democratic Ukraine. We call for a tough and continuous response to the occupation of Crimea and the continuing Russian aggression. Just today, we um, we had six um, wounded during um, the um, Minsk process, which is um, now going through the phase of withdrawal from the line of disengagement. And this is the daily price that we pay to, uh, in this peaceful effort to ensure implementation of the Minsk agreement. <clears throat> we call for supporting we, uh, we, call an, um, we call for a tough uh, response um, <clears throat> to the occupation of Crimea and Russian aggression through maintaining the sanctions regime. We call for supporting Ukraine on its path to reforms, for enhancement of Ukraine's defense capacity through continuing training and equip programs and providing some critically needed defense equipment for helping Ukraine to, to address its acute problem with two millions of IDPs. This new challenge for Ukraine has been treated as our own internal problem, but the increase in humanitarian crisis calls for more uh, attention and effort from the world. We call for support in Ukraine's European and Euro-Atlantic integration. We believe that together with the new team at the helm of the United States, we can fill our longer term agenda with the efficient institutional content, primarily through activating the Strategic Partnership Commission to bring investments in Ukraine's defense and security sector, strengthening of the institutional capacity in Ukraine. In recent months, we have seen emergence of the new anti-corruption and law enforcement institutions, which have high uh, trust in the eyes of the Ukrainian society and the international partners. We need to continue to support them on the way to cleanse the system and reinforce their role. We need to invest in energy security of, of Ukraine through joint UN, U, US, EU efforts to strengthen energy efficiency, and to um, expand renewable energies in Ukraine. We need to enhance high-tech potential and innovative cooperation, including in the military technical industry, space, aviation, and IT sectors through building partnerships. In this context, I would like to refer to the recent successful launch of Antares OU-5 space vehicle operated by Orbital, it has taken place last week, where Ukraine has taken a significant part by um, assembling and uh, producing a stage one of the carrier rocket. This only example put Ukraine among 10 world's space nations and indicates that it can be a reliable partner of the United States 
in the peaceful exploration of space and other high-tech sectors. And of course, we should together invest in the people-to-people -people contact through cultural, educational, and professional exchange programs that promote democracy and increase the mutual understanding between our nations. Here I would also like to briefly mention one of the new important projects called carried out by our activists and included into the National Council of Reform Endeavors, Global Ukraine Initiative. It stems from one of the successful Georgian practices in involving English-speaking volunteers and um, um, who come to the country to teach English, uh, to, um, uh, to participate in summer camps and uh, expand and um, improve the English language command of the Ukrainians. This is something about other important tasks that have been also supported by our colleagues uh, from the US-Ukraine Foundation and we are very grateful for their assess assistance and for all the support from the Ukrainian-American community and from all friends of Ukraine in the United States. We look forward to work with you all in the name of our nations. Thank you, and Slava Ukraini. Thanks very much, Oksana, for your remarks. Um, I think you know that you do indeed have lots of friends in the United States who both share your concerns and who are committed deeply to Ukraine's success. And now let me turn uh, the floor over to the co-chairs of our conference, both of whom are also on the steering committee of the Friends of Ukraine Network, who will introduce uh, and expand upon or outline the dialogue initiative. Ambassador Roman Popadiuk is the chairman of the World Affairs Councils of America. He was, of course, as all of you know, uh, the first U.S. ambassador to Ukraine in 1992-93. His long government experience also includes being a deputy assistant to the president and deputy press secretary for foreign affairs and administrations of both Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Um, and after government service, among other things, Roman was executive director of the George Bush Presidential Library Foundation for 13 years. Uh, please welcome Roman Popadiuk. Boris, thank you very much for that kind introduction. Good morning, everyone. I am indeed honored to be here and to serve as co-chair of today's forum, which is sponsored by the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation and the Friends of Ukraine Network. In two weeks, we will have a president-elect and the beginning steps of a new administration. That new administration will be faced with many challenges, both domestic and foreign. On the foreign policy side, it will be the task of the administration to establish U.S. leadership, credibility, and strength on the international area. It wouldn't surprise me if the epicenter or the center of much of this challenge is in Ukraine. How the United States builds its policy and reacts to the issues in Ukraine will be a demonstration of U.S. resolve. It will also mark how the United States supports and works with its allies. It will reflect on the bilateral relationship with Russia, and the results of that relationship will also reflect on other issues around the world, particularly areas such as Syria and the greater Middle, Middle East. So therefore, there is a great challenge in terms of the new administration and the policy that it will develop toward Ukraine. And I'm very pleased that today we have a panel of experts who will address the issues in terms of the options the new administration may face as well as present recommendations that the new administration should take into consideration in shaping that policy. The experts will deal on it with a number of issues, ranging from security, economics. Also, they will look at the internal factors that affect Ukrainian policymaking and Ukraine's steps toward greater reform. Because these successes or lack of successes on the part of Ukraine will also impact and heavily influence the U.S. decisions in terms of the policy options that it has toward Ukraine and toward the region. So uh, as you can see, there is a lot at stake here for the new administration as well as for Ukraine. The options that our experts will be examining today 
will be presented during the course of today's session, but also will be a, presented as a final written product toward the end of the year. Now, throughout this whole process in the last two years of Russian aggression against Ukraine, one of the leading supporters of Ukraine has been the U.S. Congress. It has been a bipartisan effort for support of Ukraine, and we've seen the leadership in terms of the House and Senate Ukraine caucuses, and also now we see the formation of a former members of Congress Ukraine group. This congressional support will continue to be very important, and we look forward to the new administration working very closely with uh, the Congress and the former members of Congress in shaping that dynamic policy toward Ukraine. Now, having said that, underlying a lot of this support in, within Congress itself is the grassroots support that a lot of people of, from the Ukrainian American community as well as the non-Ukrainian community that have given toward policy toward Ukraine. And a new network has been established known as the Friends of Ukraine Network that brings individuals and groups together to highlight the issues in Ukraine and to push forward for a more positive and supportive policy on, on the part of the U.S. government toward Ukraine. Some of those organizations are present here today, and two of them are, are sponsors of today's event. And I'd like to just mention them. The UDQ Family Foundation has been very supportive of the U.S.-Ukraine Foundation, as well as the new International Leadership Institute um, has been very supportive and active in all activities. So we're very pleased that we have the support of these two groups. In addition, there are a number of participating organizations in today's events that are, I think, highlighted on the screen for you. And they're very numerous, and they're in your program also, so you can take a, a look at them. Now, you know, I mentioned that there are a number of issues that the experts will be examining. I think one of the core issues that people have kind of forgotten or have overlooked is the humanitarian issue in Ukraine. There are over three million um, displaced people in Ukraine in various stages. Um, and it's very important, I should say refugees uh, in Ukraine in various stages. There are IDPs, uh, there are young uh, people, children, the aged are being affected by the conflict. Yet the re response of the international community has not been as forthcoming as we've seen in other instances throughout the world. For example, the UN has budgeted or targeted something like $298 million for support of the refugee issue in Ukraine, but we've only seen about $85 million of that allocated so far. So as the administration that's coming in in January formulates its policy toward Ukraine, I think it's going to be very, very important for it to focus also on the humanitarian side of the Ukrainian situation and push forth not only a bilateral effort with the between the United States and Ukraine to help the Ukrainian humanitarian issue, but also on the international area to push forth to get the international community more gainfully employed in assessing and addressing this issue in Ukraine. Um, at this time, what I would like to do is um, turn to my uh, co-chair, um, Ambassador Timuri Yakobashvili, a good friend of mine. Timuri is the head of the new International Leadership Institute which I mentioned earlier, and is a sponsor of today's program. Tumori served as uh, Georgia's ambassador to uh, the United States. He's very familiar with the issues of Russian aggression in the region. He's been very supportive of the Ukrainian uh, policy, uh, policy and has been very supportive of the efforts of the Ukrainian community as well as the non-Ukrainian community in support of Ukraine's uh, goals to stem off the um, Russian aggression. At this time, it is my great pleasure to call to the podium my good friend, Tamuri. Thank you, Roman. Good morning. I'm glad that you made it in spite of the traffic. So, uh, people often ask me, you know, you are Georgian, what are you doing? Here, either you should be in Ukraine, like many other Georgians, or you know, back in Georgia. But I discovered that uh, you know, supporting Ukraine is not only an issue of Ukrainians. I mean, I must, I must underline that uh, there are so many Ukrainian events happening in Washington. Somebody may have a Ukraine fatigue and say, you know, why this place is occupying such a, you know, place. And there is a good explanation for that. And the simple explanation is that Ukraine is not Las Vegas, meaning that whatever happens in Ukraine doesn't stay in Ukraine. 
and it has a larger implication for entire region, if not the entire world order. Uh, that's why you know, fixing Ukraine or uh, dealing with the problems uh, of occupation, annexation, and um, military confrontation between Russia and Ukraine is not only a purely Ukrainian issue that has larger uh, implications for my country, Georgia, for sure, but for uh, world order, European security, and any other dimensions that you can look around, starting from prices on uh, agricultural products or other products that Ukraine is one of the biggest producers, and et cetera, and et cetera. So I think that it cannot be underestimated how important uh, survival, development, and success of Ukraine um, how important it is for the rest of the world. Uh, being ambassador, not so long ago, I discovered that um, in Washington you cannot have a luxury to be an expert of one area. You have to be multi-talented and multi-tasked and, uh, you know, something uh, two-in-one at least, like shampoos or all-inclusive like hotels. Uh, and it's easy to discover that people who are called Ukraine watchers are also the Russia watchers, Georgia watchers, Baltic watchers. We are talking about the same group of people, probably around 200 men strong, that know this region, care about this region, uh, and can serve as a very important ingredient for decision crafting or opinion crafting. And that fact is the uh, base of the idea of having a Friends of Ukraine network. So it's not only a national politics, it's not only a Ukrainian great diaspora who does amazing things, but also to include in this endeavor other people uh, who are not necessarily ethnic Ukrainians, but do care about that region, especially Ukraine, for the reasons that I mentioned. And. Um, I think it was very successful beginning uh, a couple of years ago by Nadia McConnell and her team to initiate this uh, group that is uh, very rapidly growing. Now, as you heard from my friend and colleague Roman, we are going to have also the congressional part, people who served in the US Congress that understand the importance of Ukraine and understand how important this is for foreign security and any other politics. So. Uh, part of the people that you will see today are already part of the group. And we look forward to have more people in this group because, as I mentioned, issues that need to be addressed are complex. It's not only one issue like lethal weapon to Ukraine or, you know, economic support to Ukraine. This is much more complex issue because we are talking about situation when Ukrainian success, Ukrainian democracy, survival of the Ukrainian state, and prosper prosperity of the Ukrainian state can play a huge role in modernizing Russia, modernizing entire Eastern Europe, and having one more reliable partner in the world for the United States. So I know time is short, so I will cut myself short here and give a floor to other speakers, and then I'll see you in my panel. Thank you.